In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can recreate the feeling, the sense of peeling paint, chipped wood, uh, in, a pa in an acrylic painting. Now, before we dive deeper into this, I'll first show you this time-lapse part, because this is the whole idea. The idea is to build your painting in layers, and with acrylics that's fairly easy. So in this case, we can first paint that dulled blue color of the doors, that's lost its shine a long time ago. And after that, we can paint the details on top of it. And it's not very difficult, I'll show you what you can look for. The list of materials that I used you can find in the description box below the video. First I'm gonna mix some blue color for the tiles. I use a little bit of ultramarine blue and titanium white. And the color doesn't have to be exactly right the first time in this first layer because it won't be that opaque anyway. Because ultramarine is quite a transparent pigment and uh, of course titanium white is a little bit more opaque but still you won't get it right the first layer most of the times. So I don't bother a too much about the exact color. I just want to have a base layer of color. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea of painting these kind of things in general with a lot of textures. It is always useful just to have some base layers that you can work on later on. Of course you can uh, do it, uh, do it uh, wet and wet as well. But with acrylics layering is easy so why not? Now I'm going to mix the color for the doors. And uh, I've also put some medium on my palette. And for the color of the doors I've used... Stalo blue with a little bit of titanium white and a little touch of magenta. But it's slightly less purplish than the ultramarine blue colors that I used for the tiles. And why did I add medium? That's because that increases the transparency even more so you can look through it. And then you preserve the sketch lines a little bit. And again with this color as well it doesn't have to be good straight away in the first layer it's just a, a general color wash that you can build on later same goes for a dark value that i'm making right now that's here for in the windows on top of the doors that's quite a dark area but again, I use a little bit of medium and I've uh, made a dark color with ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Yeah, you can see that it leans a little bit more towards the burnt umber side. So the balance is slightly more to the brown side. And again, it's just a basic indication of areas that I'm doing right now. And the same goes for the concrete here. It's just an indication. And preferably I do it a little bit towards the dark side in this case. Because later on I can easily paint the lighter parts on top of it. And then at some parts I can let the previous layer shine through a little bit. And then automatically I have these more shadowy parts. But you'll see later on as we go on in this video. And um, these are all kind of grey colors, so the base for those grey colors is uh, always, in my case, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And a little bit of titanium white. But sometimes you need more, uh, a little bit of yellow maybe as well, and sometimes a little bit more of red. And as well, I don't clean the brush too much. So, uh, look at this, I have a dirty brush, and I can work the dirtiness <laughs> in the paint, so to speak. So, the top of the brush is loaded with a light color, but my brush itself is a little bit dirty. And when I push a little bit harder, that dirty color will uh, contaminate the light paint a little bit. And that's, in this case, just what I need, what I want. Now, we have a base layer. Now I'm gonna go to the second layer. 
First, I need my glasses, but uh, because otherwise I can't even see what I'm doing. That's a bit of a problem when you're painting, of course. Um, but now I've just taken some black for uh, the opaqueness. And that black I've mixed with burnt umber and a little bit of titanium white. So it isn't pitch black, slightly towards the brown and slightly light. Now I've made a very dark blue color for the shadow parts here. So you see, and again, this doesn't cover that well the first layer, but that doesn't matter. I can always go over it again. And here again, a dark accent. I like to put in some dark spots already for kind of a balanced feel feeling. And with a small round brush, I can easily do some smaller lines, some more detailed lines. Oh, and one thing uh, is important to mention as well, that um, you don't have to do exactly in, in a case like this, with a painting like this, of course, it's not necessary that you do everything perfectly straight. It's an old door anyway, so if it's a little bit bent, doesn't matter. Here I add a little bit of darker parts as well. You see on my palette how close the values and colors are. They're all very gray. And there are all some slight variations in gray and uh, in tonal values and in color. So that's often the trick. Just uh, try not to exaggerate that too much. Now I need an orangey kind of color. So I've mixed red and yellow and I get an orange mixture for this part. And again, it's just a base layer. The color doesn't have to be perfect, but I keep it a little bit towards the dark side, the Star Wars <laughs> again. Um, and now I can, while it's still wet, I can add a little bit of lighter values as well. And just do a bit of these random brush strokes. Because it is messy anyway, so you can do this very freely. Try to do it a little bit, uh, yeah, randomly. And that sometimes is even uh, difficult enough already, because before you know it, you start making patterns, and patterns are boring, uh, and especially if it is meant to look old. While it's still wet, you can add more light every time. Now I start working with new kinds of blues. So. I make a slightly lighter blue and I put that on top of the previous layer, you see? And um, that's the trick. We want to make that dulled blue color of the doors. It has a little bit of a matte feeling to it. It isn't that shiny anymore because it's, uh, it's, it's totally gone. Paint has worn out. And how do you replicate that feeling? Well, if you look closely at the photograph, you see that the actual differences between tonal values and colors are all very subtle. It's very uh, important to look at the tonal values. So, most of the times we accidentally exaggerate everything we see, but look on my palette how small the differences in blues are. And you see here as well, so I add a little bit more white. And sometimes I make the blue a little bit more grey and sometimes I make it more intense. And, but very small steps. Oh, it's time for some new coffee! Quick! Now the doors have a kind of a base layer, base color. Now I can start adding some details on top of that. So the layer is dry. 
and I just look at all these dots and you see I add light colors on top of it. Still, this isn't pure white. It still contains a little bit of blue or gray. And you see, you can easily paint on top. But if I would make it pure white, then the colors would pop out way too much. And of course, there are later on, there are some parts that are nearly white, but at this stage, no need to do that. And of course, at some spots, you also see the wood uh, coming through. Eh? So here you see some variation see in gray again, some uh, slightly darker and some uh, slightly lighter variations. And I just look at the photograph, that's where I get the information. And every time I compare, I think, how big is this contrast between the blue color and that gray color or the brown color or that white color that I see? And that, those are the colors that I see. The wood is a little bit gray, a little bit brown gray. You see on my palette as well. But there are slight variations in darkness contrast. So, if the contrast is higher, then the color pops out more. But you see here, down there, it is slightly more towards the gray side. But then, here on top, it becomes a little bit more lighter. So, I add more light. You see, like this. Here as well, I already put a slightly darker value there. And now, on top of that, I can put some lighter values. That's the whole trick. Here I use a little bit more brown again, brown gray. You see, and just look at the photograph. How big is the contrast between that gray, that brown, and the blue that's already there? Eh? That's the whole thing. So, you see, here contrast is maybe a little bit too low, but then I can add lighter parts on top of it again. But I did have that base color, that darker base color there, so all these layers start working together. That's often the trick with textures. So if you want to paint grass, for instance, as well, uh, then it's often useful to start with a fairly dark value, and if you then paint the lighter grass blades on top of it, then the darker parts will look like shadow areas and the lighter pieces of grass will stick, will pop out more. All the time, just continue building these colors. So it's important to build your painting in layers. First you make a base layer, then you add new layers on top of it. And in these new layers, subtlety is very important. Try not to exaggerate too much in the beginning. You can exaggerate later on as much as you like. And how do you paint subtle? Well, keep the contrast between colors and tonal values low. So try not to build the contrasts too quickly. Also keep in mind with painting textures like this, it's no problem to paint a little bit sloppy because this subject is sloppy. But the same goes for grass and for textures in clothes and that kind of stuff. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.